What is going on guys? Hassie at CollectiveKicks.com. If you guys want to shop this week's top sneaker deals, check the link in the description and happy shopping. For today's video, I have a pair of the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 in the static colorway. And this is the non-reflective version. Uh, so there's actually two different versions of this shoe. There's a reflective version that dropped exclusively on Yeezy Supplies website. And the upper as well as the laces were 3M reflective but it looked primarily the same as this shoe. And then the wider release that came to Foot Locker, Champs, uh, Adidas.com, and so on, uh, was this one, which is the non-reflective version. So I didn't luck out on the other one. This one, however, was a lot easier to pick up. It was a much more of a general release. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section if you guys picked up a pair or not, or is it something that you guys were looking to potentially pick up, and that's why maybe you checked out this video. And if you guys are new to my channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell uh, if you guys want to be notified of the videos. And I can't believe it, I actually hit 400,000 subscribers, which is insane. So thank you to you guys that have been long-term subscribers and enjoy the content. I think that this is actually quite a refreshing take on the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 for what we've seen in recent times. You definitely get a different look than the creams, the butters, and the sesames. All those were like monotone, and this is uh, static, as you could see, so it has a lot of different uh, vibes to this shoe. The biggest change, though, on this version of the 350 V2 is this a uh, little lightning strike down the middle of the shoe. So this is a lot different because this is actually see-through and it's a breathable uh, material, as you could see here. And uh, yeah, so it adds a, a little bit of extra look to the shoe because of that. As you work your way down the side of the visible section, you could see this is the padding for the heel section uh, back here. And then this is actually uh, the underlay right here, which is uh, like the extra reinforcement for the toe box and then also for the laces here. And in the toe box section, you could see there's some perforation uh, underneath here for some ventilation. So just to show you guys a couple different versions, there's the V2, and this was one of the first colorways to release of this with the Beluga colorway with that crazy stripe that we all know and love. At least I love that one. This pattern though of the knit, we were used to this, how it had that little swirl design and that continued on when we had like the zebras and stuff with the later V2s. And you could see the one thing that they changed, they added the back tab back to the shoe, which was something we saw in the V1s. Some of the V2s didn't have that back tab for those that didn't know that. So there is that little bit of a difference, but fundamentally the shape and the uh, look of the upper is exactly the same. Move your way to the static though, and you could see that they changed it up completely, which is what we've been waiting for, a refresh of the prime knit, um, at least I've been waiting for it, a refresh of the prime knit upper. And so you could see they changed the entire thing. There's a bunch of different sections and segments in the static version. And top down too, there's a big change in the static version. You could see here, there's extra color here. And it's just a completely different pattern than what we've seen in the past. It's almost like a V3 in a sense because it's totally new. The Ultra Boost has a 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, .0, but the body is fundamentally the same. And this is kind of the same thing where the body is totally uh, the same, but the pattern is completely different. So I do have some pros and cons that I wanted to go over with you guys for this video. So let's go ahead and get into some of those. We'll start off with the pros and then we'll get into the cons, but just know that these are opinions in general and actually some of these pros can be cons to other people. So just throwing that out there. Um, first pro is that the, again, that there's no supply on the shoe. It's just nice to have no riding on the shoe. It's a little bit cleaner. And I don't know, I just like that this is a different change of pace than what we've seen. Another pro is, as I've already mentioned, the prime knit upper is a nice new pattern, something we haven't seen uh, in a long time. So it's awesome to see a new actual pattern of the shoe. Another pro is the clear window. I think that this adds a little pop to the shoe as well. If you wanna wear really bright socks, you could probably see them through the window of the shoe also. Another pro is the resale is really low on the shoe. This one was pretty well mass produced and you can get them for like 260, I think on StockX or so. Another pro kind of goes without saying, but the Boost is um, amazing on the shoe. I'm a big fan of Boost, as you guys already know. It's also a really comfortable shoe for those that have never tried a 350 V2. They are really, really comfortable. Uh, I usually go with a size 9.5 true to size or a size 10. If I go 9.5, sometimes I take out the insoles to give me a little bit more wiggle room. Made for lifestyle, which is the other pro for me, is I'm a, um, a casual guy, and so like I like to be able to have shoes that are casual, and this is a great one, uh, in my opinion. It is really quite a simple shoe. It's a cloth knit upper, and then a rubber midsole, and boost um, encapsulated inside of the midsole. And so 
It's really a minimalistic shoe. Also, the shoe is pretty breathable because of the prime knit upper anyway, even though this is like a thicker knit. But when you add a little side vent right here, it makes it a little bit more breathable. Personally, I think that these should have released in summer, not winter, but that's just my take because of the extra window. Would have been nice for like breathability for summer. And the last pro that I wanted to show you guys is that the laces are actually reflective. So the whole upper is not reflective, just those laces. So kind of cool that the laces are reflective, um, but yeah, so I just wanted to mention that one. Now let's go ahead and get into some of the cons. I personally think it's a little bit confusing because there is a static version with reflective and a static version that's not reflective, but fundamentally the shoes look exactly the same, at least from pictures, maybe in hand, they look a little bit different with the reflective material knit through. But I don't know, it's kind of odd to me. And I think it's a good marketing ploy though that Yeezy Supply has only the um, reflective ones and everybody else gets the regular ones. And then it has the exclusivity that I've been saying that Yeezy needs to do because they are hitting the masses, which is great, but they're not hitting that niche market of uh, collectors and people that are just buying the hype. And that market is really important, as I mentioned before, because it extends the cool factor of the brand. And because of that, the product itself could be watered down in some colorways, but in other colorways, they could be somewhat coveted. So the reflective one in this case is the one that's coveted and selling for $600 or something like that. So it's selling for at least double what the regular version is just because it was made in a more limited supply. I think that Adidas and Yeezy both need to be doing that the entire year for 2019 to keep the cool factor because 2018, they saturated the heck out of themselves. So hopefully we'll see something happen to keep the hype beast involved in the culture, which is hilarious to say, but it's also really, really pivotal and important for the brands to do something like that. And if you disagree, leave a comment in the comment sections as to why, but that's just my take on it. I think it's really important uh, to keep the cool there, which is main reason why Virgil Abloh was super hot in the last two years. But the saturation, as I mentioned in the video that I did about that, um, the saturation has been happening. So we'll see what happens even for the off-white branding with Nike in 2019. They said that they're discontinuing the 10, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna be discontinuing new models that are gonna be coming out. Another con to some people was again, the similar tones in a sense, because it is white and gray and it's not like earth changing. It's not really bright. Like the first colorways that we've seen like this. I mean, we have white and black from the zebra ones. We had the butters and the creams and then the, the sesames all like kind of earth tones and natural tones. So there's no real crazy pop to this colorway. And I get why people would think that that's uh, a bummer. I actually wouldn't mind dip dyeing these ones black. I think it would be crazy because of that window, but uh, I don't think I'm gonna be doing that anytime soon. Although I do have one of the creams that I dip dyed black that I will be refreshing you guys on um, and showing you guys that video very soon. So stay tuned on the channel the next week because I finished it. It looks pretty interesting. I think it's people are gonna like it or people are gonna hate it which is the way that most of the most of the videos go when I do customs. Moving on though, another con could be that it is another 350 V2. A lot of people were like, stop making them, especially this last quarter with Yeezys. They've dropped so many new colorways and then retroed a couple colorways that people are sick of seeing um, the 350 V2s. But this is a one that I think, again, just repeaks a lot of people's interests more so than the last like three or four colorways that drop. So it is a positive as well as a negative because of the saturation. Some people just don't like it. Another con could be that clear window because some people might not necessarily want their foot to show through and some people might not like to see uh, the underlay right here of the shoe. I think it looks cool, but I know some people will think it's a con as well. And obviously that $220 price point is a con. It's just at a lot of money for a very, very simple shoe. I wish they would drop the price points to like 170. The materials don't equal $220. I think it would be a good strategic move if actually Yeezy did that. Maybe have a tiering system where some of the prices are higher and lower depending on the colorways that you get, which is what Jordan brand does. Some of the models you can pay 250 for, other ones you can pay uh, 160 depending on the model and the colorways. And the last con is that the style of the 350 V2 is not for everybody. Obviously this is a very unique style and it's not one that you can use for sports or anything like that. It's just a casual athleisure shoe, if you will. I think it's a great shoe regardless. It just could be a con to some people because uh, it is not uh, that attractive. I mean, a lot of people just are like, oh, I still can't get on board with the 350s. I personally have been on board with the 350s since the very first uh, 350 V1 because I just, I love the fact that it was an athleisure shoe that uh, looked kind of cool. I mean, I, I don't know, I still really like them. So that's my pro and cons of the static version. Leave some comments in the comment section of some additional pros or cons that you guys may have about the static uh, 350 V2, but I think it looks great. I think that this colorway is dope and I, I've been a fan of them for a while. I like the Sesame colorway a lot. I think that the Sesame colorway with this type of pattern 
would have been even better. And it makes me kind of excited to see what they're gonna do with the 350 V2 in 2019. I have no idea. I mean, I feel like they could continue this line like they do the Ultra Boost with different patterns and more colors. That's my biggest critique is bring us more colors, Kanye, like bring us a lot more colors like we did in this one. I don't know, I think it would be better just to be able to have a little bit more variety. Anyways, that's my thoughts on the new static colorway of the Easy Boost 350 V2. I'm happy that I got mine so fast. The shipping was super, super light and quick, but that's my thoughts. Leave some comments on yours, but again, subscribe and notification bell if you wanna be notified of when the videos go live. And thank you again for uh, watching. Have a great rest of the day. Peace guys.